In our most recent lecture, we learned about uh, binomial experiments and the binomial formula. Uh, as you have seen, the binomial formula is somewhat of a headache to actually compute. It has a lot of moving parts in it. And so uh, I thought that this would be a, a good opportunity to see how you could use your Jupyter notebook to uh, calculate the uh, probability uh, of success in binomial trials and uh, to, to do some other things as well. Uh, we're going to start out by importing pandas. Okay, We're also going to uh, import some other uh, packages. And so the second line, uh, I, I'm going to, to import uh, a binomial package, but from I'm going to do it a different way. I mean, uh, the binomial is a part of something called the scipy.stats package. And so the syntax to import it is from scipy.stats import binom. Okay, as you may guess, that stands for binomial. And then because I, I, I want to use this later in, uh, in the spreadsheet, I'm going to say we're going to be working with number of trials equal to 15 with a probability of success equal to 0.7. Okay. Uh, those so that when we get to the, the various uh, places in, in our uh, sheet, uh, it'll be written what that all stands for. So here I shift and it's all done. Okay. Here I want to calculate on this line, I want to calculate the pro probability when, that when we have uh, 15 uh, trials, okay, number of trials equal 15, with a probability of success equal to 0.7, I want to compute what the probability of having exactly two successes in that experiment is. So the, the binom.pmf and the PMF stands for probability mass function. Okay, so I shift and enter and it does all the arithmetic for you there. So uh, two, uh, the probability of two successes is very, very small. I can try here uh, for a larger number of successes, let's say five. I shift and enter and hey, well, that's, you know, uh, a larger number. If I go up to say 10, okay, so the, this is a, a larger number. So it's just a matter of finding the sweet spot for finding when we would have like a 20% probability of success. Okay, so on a on a point by point basis, the syntax is put the number of successes in the trial, the number of trials, and then the probability of success, and that will that will give you your number without all of the number crunching by hand we had before. Okay, now. Uh, ultimately, you know, my my point on this, I'm going to show us a graph of how our binomial distribution looks, how our uh, probabilities are distributed along with the number of successes. But in order to do that, I'm going to teach you a couple of other things. And one of these is uh, I'm going to introduce you to uh, dictionaries. Now, dictionaries is a data structure that we have in pandas and, and, and python and other languages uh, I'm, I'm gonna set this up now by giving you like one of the simplest dictionaries we could possibly have i'm going to call it successes and successes is only going to really have one item in it and i uh, i'm going to call it successes two for reasons that that will be clear um, and in it, you know, so successes is the handle on this item, uh, or the key, I guess, to use the nomenclature that's used. 
the key on this item. The value of this item is going to be a list. Okay, and in this list, I'm going to have the numbers starting at zero, one, two, three, and going up to number of trials. And to do that, I put list, and within list, uh, I put range. So range is something which will generate numbers and list will turn those numbers into a list. So I do this here. And OK, so that's entered in as a dictionary. What does this dictionary look like? Well, I type it out in a cell. I shift and I enter. And so this is what the dictionary looks like itself. It has uh, curly brackets as its delimiter, and within it, it has a single item uh, which is keyed with successes, and that single item, the value of it consists of a list with uh, 16 values from 0 to 15. Okay. Now, how does one access an item within a list, we access it by a key. And so we do successes, right? This successes and this successes. We access the key through square brackets. And within the square brackets, we put the key, which in this case is just the string successes. And so I, I access it, I shift, I enter. And so when I access it, I get the value, and the value is this list. Okay, so put a pin in this. We're going to come back to it here in a minute. I'm now going to create a binomial table, my no, uh, my binomial table data frame, and I'm going to start out on this uh, by uh, uh, pandas dot data frame. And in the argument for data frame, I'm going to put this dictionary successes in. Okay. And so I shift and I enter. And I got my binomial table. What does that binomial table data frame look like? Shift and enter. Well, my binomial data frame uh, has a single column in it. I mean, the over at the far left are the indices, but but my single column consists of the successes. Where did the successes come from? Well, this is sec successes came exactly this column, exactly this right here. If I had had more uh, items in my dictionary uh, than just the successes, I would have now have more columns in my uh, data frame. And the columns would all have the, the headings that are the same as the keys on uh, in the dictionary. Right now, we were starting it simple. We just chose to have one. Okay. Now, what I want to do is, is with each of these six number of successes, I want to have another column which associates uh, the probability of that number of successes. To do that, I'm going to define a function. And I'm going to define a function in a way that's different from before. This is a one-line function. Uh, and I'm going to be using the lambda syntax here. I'm going to, the name of the function is going to be probability. And in the function, I, I put the keyword lambda here to denote that I'm about to start a function definition. What that function will do, it will input an x. Okay, then I have my colon separator. And then after my colon separator, uh, I am going to put in, have, return binomial.pmf of x. So this x is this x. And then, okay, I filled in the number of trials and the probability of success here. Okay. 
So that's my probability function. Let me now define that. Shift and Enter. And so my probability function is defined. Okay, now I'm going to have a new column in my probability table data frame. Okay, my I'm going to call that prob. Okay, and that is going to be equal to uh, I'm going to take my binomial table successes and I'm going to apply this prob function to it. Shift and enter. And it applies that function, uh, the prob function, row by row. Okay, now let's see what my table looks like. Okay, so I now have two columns in this binomial table data frame. I still have the successes, but I have a new um, uh, column which has the probability associated with each of the number of successes here for zero successes. Oh, it's 1.43 yada 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 times 10 to the negative uh, 8. Right, so this e means going to go. On, it's exponential notation, so times 10 to the negative 8, and so uh, remember, I calculated the probability of 2. I calculated, the, I believe, uh, the probability of 10. So the probability of 10, yes, that's this guy right here. It's all in exponential notation. I could clean that up and put it in a different format if I wanted to, to take the trouble right now. But right now, I do not want to take the trouble. Uh, what I want to do is to plot this in a graph, okay, because that was going to be very revealing for us. So uh, I take my binomial table dot prop and in my graph, I'm going to do dot plot dot bar. Now this is a bar graph and it's going to look very similar to the histograms we had before, but it, it this gives us more freedom because we can choose our x-axis and our y-axis. Our x-axis is going to be the successes column. Our y-axis is going to be the probability column. And so I select this cell, I shift and I enter and, well, I didn't hit it hard enough. Shift, enter, and there we go. I've got my probability distribution. You know, uh, this is a probability distribution. It shows us how our probability is distributed with respect to our outcomes. Our outcomes being our number of successes. Okay, so here. Uh, our number for zero success, the probability is so small we can't even see it on the scale. When we get up to about five, we can begin to see the graph of it until it rises and we have a maximum probability here where we have 11 successes. At 11 successes, we have over a 20% probability. Then it begins to fall off and again, a small probability at 15. But notice our probability is concentrated here around the middle. Okay.